What's up everybody? How's it going? Hope y'all are enjoying your 4th of July weekend. A uh, little current update. Sorry the camera uh, the camera's kind of shaky. I'm out of breath right now. Um, so here's the Volvo. Got her out of the barn. Um, started doing a little bit of work to it. Ooh. Um, so we'll see what, what I get into. I've already done one thing. The wheels right here. Um, these are actually Cub Cadet lawn tractor wheels. Um, they were off of a 102, um, which uh, after doing a little bit of work research on the internet, I found out that they were actually fairly close in size as far as things I had laying around my house. Um, so I went ahead, wallowed them out. It's probably not perfect, but for my government work, it's going to work. Um, went ahead, wallowed them out a little bit and it fits. Um, granted that's been derby, but I mean, eh, they, they should do what I need them to do. Um, a lot of people ask. I've been seeing a lot of people ask, you know, what to do on these cars, you know, and then when I post pictures or something on my car, people ask me, what did you do to it? Um, the thing is, bottom line, I did a lot of research, a lot, a lot, a lot of research. I probably spent probably three months looking up everything I could under the sign, finding everything I can out about these cars from manufacturer, from websites for derby and off facebook i i did a lot of research um my rules are smash it promoter um so you it, everything that i do you guys might not be able to do depending on your promoter but if it's but if you're going to run one of these cars that smash it you pretty much can run this car and it's going to be competitive now, obviously, it is pre-ran, so I'll do my best to explain and show things, but um, starting in the back, what I did. This is new. I did originally run my, j just the stock wheels, the stock street wheels um, that it came with. And what I did is I actually took, um, it's not a grinder, I can't think of what it's called right now, but I know it's a saw that goes back and forth really fast. But I took one of those and cut these out, um, mainly because I'm cheap and I'm trying to do this as cheap as possible. So I use what I have to my advantage to build my derby cars. So I use the stock rims, the stock street wheels, and then just took these here out um the reason i'm not going to run them again this year is because on the right rear that you guys just saw that other tire that one ended up getting like a, a hole in the sidewall literally a circular hole in the sidewall um so i didn't really feel like trying to i really didn't trying to find a tire to fit these rims on top and on top of that i didn't want to spend new money for a tire so i use what i got um the rear end is welded i can't ain't gonna be able to see but i've you know obviously the cover there we go but i welded the rear gears that's all I did as far as rear end. There's no reinforcements. There's no reinforcements of any kind. I don't even have my coil springs wired down like you probably should. Um, those These blocks are still in place. But look at that. Look at that kind of room with a stock wheel. And then you come over here and look, look at the room I've got now. I am gonna try and flip these rims around. We'll see what happens. Um, 
I will try to flip them around, but I doubt it's going to work just because of the caliper and the brake drums. I don't, and the way the rim is dished, I don't think it's going to work. I think it's actually going to suck it in too far, and then I will be rubbing up against that. So, um, but, so I don't think it's going to work. Now, on these cars, they have gas tanks. These brackets right here, this bracket, it's bolted in four locations, two here and two up there. Well, um, your gas, these, these bolt in and then your gas tank bolts to these as well. What I did is I unbolted the gas tank from this bracket, from these brackets on the frame rail and left these brackets in. They're not welded at all. Not welded. I just left the bolts in. This way, if a promoter has an issue, I can unbolt it and we're good to go. Um, but then I cut this section out because it's actually like a big triangle section. And I cut that out to basically give me wheel clearance. Um, as you can see, it's probably a good thing because my frame is buckled right there. Um, yeah, looks like, so I left those in place, but, ah, uh, this is all ripped just from being rusted. Now what I did, I noticed on everything I was finding, the, it kept saying that the rear ends go down and I'm not going to lie. They actually do, in a way, go down. Um, but what I kind of did was... Let's see which one's going to be better right here. See? See that line right below my flashlight? Right there. That is right behind the bumper shock. I cut right there on that frame channel cut right behind those on both sides right there see it then what i once that was done i went ahead closed the trunk lid and then i did five inches weld so from right here to right here i welded five inches off five inches on all the way down all there we go all the way down five on five off then i ran a chain over this part right here um well actually before i ran the chain over it um you guys know what you guys know what i'm talking about but i creased the fen the quarter panels i went from right here back window pillar right here this is where i stopped and the only creasing i did was right here on that top part and i actually was i actually had this is an actual crease here and i got some more creasing but as you can see it got hit and went over but basically just crease the top and just kind of follow your body lines don't over crease these trunks just follow the natural body lines to when you're creasing it and you should be good run your chain over the middle of the trunk kind of, kind of a little bit and bit because that will be a little bit in front of where you just pre-bent um, I used a chain hoist, a sledgehammer, chain hoist, engine hoist, sledgehammer. I mean, I used anything and everything, you know, my a regular floor jack. Um, I did have a bumper. I did run a bumper on it. Run your aluminum bumpers. They'll get knocked off in the derby, but just leave them on. Uh, it, it, they're aluminum. It's not going to make any difference whether you leave that the rear one on or not 
Um, really, it's going to, I left it on just for the simple fact of to try and keep the frame rails together. That's the only reason I left it on. But now that it's been ran a few times, it's actually going to be going on its third derby. So, um, run your chain and just push this section here up. Just get it going up. And if you do it right, you can see, yes, this part right here is going down. It's going down. But this is going up. So as it gets hit, this will roll up into here. This will continue to go down. Eventually, it's going to be a wall. It will stop right, should stop right here at this quarter panel and just be a solid brick wall. I mean, and believe it or not, the last derby, the second derby it ran in, this trunk never moved. I pre-bent it. It ran one time. You can see how the quarter panels crunched and everything kind of ripped open after the derby. I beat everything in, get, made a tire, cut a few things to make my tire clearance and ran it again. And the trunk literally never moved. I mean, it might've moved like half an inch, but other than that, never moved. Up here is not welded all the way across is not welded at all so i don't know if it would make a difference or not but smash it rules does not allow us to weld our trunks right there so that's why that's not welded moving forward here is the inside of the car got a little bit of crumple in right here and right down there but I have just your basic standard cage. I've got a pipe behind the seat, a C channel going from the under the under where the dash should be, running back to right there. Um, it's only bolted in place except for this pillar over here. This pipe. This pipe here was out of a Saturn station wagon I derbied, and it was too short. So I had to add this, that piece there, and then I just added some angle iron just to help. But I welded it together um, instead of bolting it. So that's going to be fun to get out. And then exhaust clamps is what I use to hold my steering column to this one inch by one inch bar. Um, when you pull the dash out, you'll actually have uh, a dash bar in here, but it's real flimsy, real thin material. So I went ahead, took that off, took this one inch by one inch, quarter inch thick bar, and these tabs right here um, are on that real thin material. Take these off, Put your bar in and bolt it back in. Make sure you bolt those in before you weld your door shut. Because one bolt goes, one bolt you actually have to take from right, right around this area. So you have to have the door open in order to get to it. Um, my switches for the fuel filter, fuel filter, fuel pump, and the starter. The... There is the fuel pump slash filter, whatever. It is the stock one out of this car. It's just wired to a switch to the battery. Um, the shifter, stock shifter failed. Rip that damn thing out and put you just a piece of straight rod in there. Some all thread, whatever. That's going to be your best bet for these cars. Um, which you'll understand why here in a bit. But just don't, don't even... Now, I'm not taking away from anybody that builds shifters for derby cars, but I've noticed with these cars, the best route to go is just a straight rod shifter. Yes, it's going to be a pain in the butt to shift, but it seems to work the best in my experience. So, computer. From what I was told, they do not like a lot of beating and banging around. Take it. 
zip tie it to the bar it's free it's free to move around can't hit nothing um my doors are excessively welded oh my bad get the finger out of the camera all this welds weld weld plate 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 um the other side is actually i think actually worse believe it or not um Our promoter, the promoter I ran this at, they don't care how you weld the doors. You weld the doors, you weld the doors. So, um, this is all the weld plates I did. Down through here is not welded. Down, down along here is not welded. Here's the driver's door. Here. This is where it curves, so there's no weld. Plate. Got a body piece. Didn't weld, weld it all the way down right to there. And basically the same thing on the driver's side, but down here is not welded. Probably should have with that section, but not welded. Gorilla tape, every post, every post, Gorilla tape. The reason I do it is you get enough door shots and this right here the top of the door starts kind of leaning out um and i've seen our my promoter uh well they're no longer promoting but they used to if these actually lean out too far they will actually stop the derby and have the driver get out of the car um they deem it as a safety hazard so it's i don't want to say it's adding strength but it does help a little bit do you use duct tape gorilla tape gorilla tape is just what i got laying around no you know it's nothing fancy uh all i got is a chain we are allowed to run bars from here up to here we're allowed to actually weld six inches so I could actually put a bar here, run it six inches back, weld it to the whole roof, run it down, and do the same down here. But again, I use what I have. I had the chain laying around from a previous derby car build. That's what I used. Um, this was tight. I mean, this was tight, and you can see how much play is in there. Um... I've thought about switching to the bar now that I actually have some material. I've thought about switching to the bar, but if the it, but it's not a fresh build. If it was a fresh car, I will put I will put a bar in the next Volvo that I build. Um, at least at least one bar. Um, there's there is the bar. It's bolted through. I tip, put my cage in. There's that bar welded, bolted. And then it just travels right along. Back through there. Um, I do my cages beforehand. Before I weld the doors. The doors are pretty much one of the last things that I do to the car. Is welding the doors. Stock aluminum bumper. Surprisingly, it has survived, but I've also don't run this car forwards. I run it backwards both times. Yes, I've taken some shots. Obviously, that needs to get bowed down. Um, I took a couple shots where the bumpers had come over top. And, you know, that doesn't hold up. Definitely wire. Take some nine wire. Just one or two strands. Wrap one or two strands, however, whatever you want. Wrap it around. Because, like I said, I, you seen where I got hit. That actually hit the radiator and popped it right out of, right out of these mounts. This is, this is, the metal stops right here. Metal stops right here. Then you got a rubber boot. Same thing with down there. 
It's just a rubber boot. That's all this radiator does is sit in. So that radiator actually got hit, came back, and got into the fan. Now, it's a plastic fan. After the first derby, I took it off. Um, didn't, really seem to, didn't really seem to notice one way or the other with or without the fan. So, um, no box. No air filter box. Right there's the thing. Um, mass airflow sensor. There's no box to this. Coil, not the best location, but for the time being, that's where it's got to sit. Power steering reservoir, that's basically where it's got to sit for the time being. Computer, I moved on top of the motor and zip tied it to the top of the motor. It does not interfere with anything where it's at. Um, reason being is this plug... And wiring is so big, it actually runs down through between everything. And I just didn't feel like messing around with it too much. So that's where I threw it. The hole, I, for the, the hole in the hood is right above the computer. So it doesn't hit nothing, doesn't rub on nothing. Um, so you're good there. Uh, which side is my starter? Right here. Let's get, let's get dirty. I've got one gauge wires right here. Negative runs to, like these wires run to my battery. Battery to the starter. Well, my bad. The negative goes from the battery to the engine block itself. The positive goes from the battery to the starter. Right down there. Then I have a wire going from the starter to a toggle switch. Then that goes to the what, whatever. So flip the toggle switch and it fires off. Make sure you do that. If not, the car will shut down because it goes for whatever reason. I can't remember what it is right now. Um, so yeah, headers are the same, all that's the same, um, stock front suspension, nothing is welded up front, stock front suspension, yes, it's tweaked a little bit, I can tell it's tweaked, the front suspension is absolutely horrible motor mount is absolutely horrible on these cars they are soft like nobody's business but protect the front end they'll do they will go very far um i'm currently in the works as far as making front strut aftermarket front struts for these because i am allowed to change out the front suspension well the front struts um so I'm trying to figure out a way to do that because when you actually turn the wheel on these, this whole thing turns. The whole strut actually turns when you turn the wheel. So it's, I don't want to say it's like, a, I, I, I don't know if it, other cars are like that. I've not really paid that close attention, but I just know what, these ones. Um, so front suspension is soft as all get out. Be careful. Dry shaft, uh, I doubt I'll be able to get underneath. But dry shaft actually has a U-joint in the middle right there. So you got to watch how, like, how you do everything. You got to make sure that that's pretty well in line. Um, dry, transmission mount is basically a rubber hockey puck like the motor mount. Make sure you make that solid like your motor mounts and last but not least the motor mounts there's my motor mounts um, as you can see one of my welds broke that is my fault I half-ass welded welded the motor mount together in a hurry and slapped it in it was not my best work um, that is a one inch by one inch quarter inch thick uh, square tubing it is the original motor mount 
but if you take the time the rubber pucks actually on each end actually have a metal disc in them which bolts to the motor the mounts themselves that's why you see the discs right there um those are metal welded to those so it's actually bolted and welded but um i have seen and heard a lot of guys um say that they take the uh two inch round tubing quarter inch thick and make the motor mounts out of that again i use what i have i recommend doing the same thing i bought this car for 400 bucks used what i had and i probably got maybe another hundred dollars in building it so yeah but I do know they have two pumps, one's in the tank, one sits right there, but believe it or not, that pump right there is not even hooked up, and it and it still works. So, um, pretty much you just keep one pump if you really want. Just make sure that the, P the fuel pressure is where it needs to be. Other than that, it will work with just one pump. So, but... That's all I've got. That's what I've done to my car. That plate, that door seam right there is all the farther forward that I have welded. There is no welding anywhere on the frame. Not even on my bumper shocks. So there's no welding from the front door seam forward. No welding at all. Um... The rear suspension is not even welded. Everything is bolted, stock location, stock components, no aftermarket components. It's that's what I've done. That's how I built my car. Like I said, it took I did probably about three months worth of research over the winter on this car. And this is how this is what what my rules allow and what I learned about these cars from other people. This is how I interpreted everything. This is how I built my car, and quite honestly, I will run a freaking 80s Volvo sedan or station wagon over anything else out there. And that includes the Cavaliers and the Camrys. So, it's, it's they're killer cars. You, you can't go wrong. And I don't even have a fucking floorboard. So, and it's still holding this damn strong. But... It all depends on how you guys build them. Depends on your rules. That's that's what it boils down to. I I I do everything. I build I derby for fun. I'm not out there for the money. I'm there to put on a show. But at the same time, I'm not gonna go out there and be the first one out. That that is my that is my goal for the night is to not be the first one out. So I do do a little bit of work to it, but. These cars are awesome. You cannot go wrong with the Volvos. I don't care what anybody says. I will argue with them till I'm blue in the face. You can't go wrong. So, well, time to get back to work. I hope this video helps everybody out, um, especially building the Volvos now. I know that it seem, they, seem to, they seem to be becoming a popular car, so hopefully this helps, and hopefully, you know... Hopefully we can continue finding other cars. Want you know once the Camrys and the Cavaliers are gone. So, but the Volvos are definitely definitely a good contender. So, well, you guys enjoy your fireworks if you have are watching any. If not, well, get out there, get a Volvo, build it to a derby car, and make your own fireworks. Y'all have a good weekend. <laughs>